In our house, we use a little electric on-demand hot water heater to basically fill the water line, the shower, with hot water immediately after we turn it on. And it runs long enough for the water to make it up here from way down in the basement on the other side of the house where the big hot water heater is at. And it does a great job. You get in there, you have hot water almost instantly. By the time this runs out of water, you've got enough from the other heater so it's still hot. The hot water from the big heater down in the basement feeds right into the top of this baby. So that's how that works. When I first built this house, I had a little bit larger heater in here and I hadn't completed the shower. And because that one's a little bit larger, it won't fit out through this door. No way possible without dismantling the door, which is kind of holding up the, the shower. See this little door right here where everything hides away inside there. In order to get it out, I've decided that the smartest thing to do would be to make a little hole right here in the wall. That table sits there, nobody ever sees that spot. And if I do this carefully enough so that I don't make a big mess out of it, I should be able to cut this piece of sheetrock out, slide that thing out and stick the piece of sheetrock back in there and throw a little tape on the back side of it a little gorilla tape or duct tape or something like that and not even really have to worry about re-spackling and uh, painting this because um, nobody's going to see it anyway and even if they did they wouldn't be seeing much in fact if I wanted to get fancy I could put me a little wood edge around there and have it where you can slip it in and slip it out just kind of like that idea of having that kind of access to this spot um, mostly so I can get that hot water heater out but also you know if I ever needed to do some plumbing and kind of have a little better view of this section of the bottom corner of the shower there this would allow me to do that so while I'm here I'll fix this plug I don't know how many of you can see that plug or not but apparently this electrical part is sunk into the wall and then this part cracked uh, at some point no, that's very fixable right there. It's just a matter of finding a new plate and adjusting that so it fits right. So I do this first and then we'll do that. Um, we got a new replacement hot water heater coming for that. Now this is like the fourth time I've done this. I've got one of these in the kitchen. I've got one up here. This one went bad. The original one went bad. I had that other that I'd gotten from guy named Ron Valentine, he's passed away already, and I don't think y'all ever got to know him much, but he was a local hot rod. I don't want to call him a hot rod guy because he was kind of a genius in a lot of ways, but he'd had an accident, had a little brain damage going for him. Um, so he was a genius, but he was a little bit of, a, uh, of an unusual personality kind of genius. But he's, he, I think he's probably the first person that ever literally crawled up under the rat rod with me while I was building it and helped me work on it. So he's an awful nice guy and he had that little uh, hot water heater and oh I'd given him 15 bucks for it and threw it in the garage at some point back in the day and then uh, when, when that one went bad I just pulled the one that he had sold me out of the shed there and uh, was able to use it to replace that one with. So I really haven't burned up two new ones. I burned up one new one and one old one. Down in the kitchen, I've had one that stopped heating and I've had another one that stopped leaking. That's what this one did, it started leaking. And I think the first one here didn't leak, but I think it stopped heating. My hope is as I continue to make these things, I'll make them better so that that will always be an issue, but there's no guarantee that that's going to be true. You may not make them better, you just might keep making them better. Good. A lot longer, people like me keep buying them. I could probably spend a bit more money, do some re-plumbing, put a different hot water heater in there. But to be honest with you, it takes me maybe 15-20 minutes to swap that out when one goes bad 
And another thing about my house, my house is almost 200 years old, and if I get a, if I spill water in my house, it's no big deal. Um, these, these, this wood, it's not pressed wood. It's not, you know, nowadays you go down to the Home Depot and they'll sell you some glued together cardboard for plywood. And of course, water hits it and it all swells up and warps and goes bad. I heard, I remember a guy telling me he had an ice maker on his refrigerator that went bad and it wound up costing him $10,000 to replace the floors and things in his house. I'm thinking, well, that's just stupid. Not that he was stupid, but I mean, that whole idea of designing something that's that freaking sensitive to water. I mean, let's face it, if you live in a house, you've got water coming in the house, and you've got floors and walls and things like that that are so sensitive to water that you can't withstand a leak in your ice maker. Maybe somebody should rethink how things are engineered, you know, when it comes to building houses. But I won't get into that because I know it's all a matter of economics and I know that they're always making fresh new types of glue boards and plywood chip boards and stuff like that. And just like anything else, I guess they figure, well, if we make this stuff long enough, we'll make it good enough where it won't cause people problems. And there's a lot of houses built that way and they, they do okay, you know, I've... I'm getting off on a rant that I don't want to get off on, so I'm going to stop talking about building materials in modern day houses. Let's just forget I brought that subject up.